Good morning. Good morning. She's, good morning. Do, she's doing my omelette. Omelet. Yeah, so she's doing my omelette. Yeah. <laughs> good morning, sir. Welcome to the Grand Canal and Spa. My name is Sandra. I'm your chef for this morning. This is our all our local foods, fresh food station. Hot oatmeal. I have omelettes, fry eggs, hard boiled eggs, um, pancakes. We have bacon, sausages, local spinach. Thank you, enjoy. Nice to have you in Castara today. Castara is a beautiful village which you all know and it's a place that I love and it's a place that I grew up. Mr. Daniel, my good friend on my side here, he will give you the full history of Castara because he'd been around before me. So as, as, as time goes on, things have changed from in, in, in the 60s to now. Transportation was so hard in Castara. So if you want to go out to get out of Castara, it had a man, two person here had transport and you had all, you have to put in your application to go out to Castara, for, to, to Scarborough in weeks in advance. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. So the, both of them have passed on now. And the, what we are seeing now that is a, is a form of plenty more development in Castara. Now we have so many guest houses in Castara and people tourism take over come in and the place has been established and make it plenty plenty far different you know Castara was was a more laid back place the night time in the night was <laughs> you could imagine how dark it could be when we used to glad when it was moonlight everybody used to enjoy moonlight but now we as you get electricity and so forth you know because I have developed immensely and if you could look around, you will see how many houses you could have. When a, when a vehicle coming into Castara, you, any vehicle from Castara going out, you could have count and know, slide down and know, well, who this vehicle is, who's going out at this time and who is coming in. People used to say we are living behind God's back. But I say we're not living behind God's back no more. We live in front of God, in front of God's face, or side of God. <laughs> right now, Castara have known best for fishing. It's a fishing port. You could get any kind of fish, any kind of fish in Castara. And when I say fish, I mean fresh fish or dry fish or smoked fish. You understand? I mean, that is one of our main resources in Castara. Currently, we are in uh, the village of Castara, up by the not very known but um, the very beautiful waterfall we have here in Castara. So, when you have treasure, you don't really, you know, reveal um, where you're buried most of the time. So, I think that that's just the, um, I think just the, the the seclusion of the area is just what um when you when you tell um tourists or whatever, like you don't really hear about the waterfall when you come here. Everybody um thinks about the beach. So when you say, oh, it's have a waterfall too, people are like, oh, really? And then, you know, that just draws them to, you know, just the curiosity and, you know. As a child, um, my parents and uncles, you know, and stuff used to, we used to come up here. I think this is one of the first places I learned how to swim. And definitely one of the, I think the first waterfall I've ever been to as well. Uh, I mean, it was right like a five minute walk from my house. So like it's a place I used to frequent as a, as a, as a child and, um, it just brings back a lot of good memories, a lot of good, you know, lines and, you know, just good times with family and friends and all that. So I, I grew up, I grew up here, you know, most of my life, all my life. So, um, yeah, this is just a, a special place to me. It has that, um, that, that connection, that, that bond, you know, time always change, you know, things always getting, you know, urbanized and modernized and so, so, um, I think Castara did a, a really good job in maintaining that and I want to, I think you have to credit um, the villagers and like the village council and all that mostly just because um, when people introduce new ideas or they want to do certain things, you still have to remember like what made Castara what it is. So I think the people here really have a good idea of that and I don't think, we have a, um, we've done a, a good job of maintaining like our heritage and like 
you know, looking back on our history and stuff and just remembering that. And I think that played a, a really good role in like maintaining while other parts of the village might um, be more modernized, like they certain things that they keep that in place because like you can't, it wouldn't be Casa without these things. So, you know, you can't do too much. And I, I, I don't know, I just have to give a lot of credit to the people here, the business owners, everyone here that, you know, they still maintain that and kept it in a certain way to make it, um, to keep it pure, I guess, I should say. So the Dutch oven is something that we would have had in Tobago for generations. And when I say generations, post-colonial generations. And Castara has had its dirt oven running every Saturday morning for the past probably 50 years or more. You know, it's a place that you could come and get the authentic dasheen bread, cassava bread, well-baked, delicacies that you would get nowhere else in the world. The, the taste is completely different. It's beautiful. The texture is different to what you would get from a conventional oven. And um, they have done well to maintain the folklore of it and the history of it so that the women that cook it would have been women that have been cooking it for the past however long and they pass it down from generation to generation to generation. So you know it's right on the beach, it's beautiful so that when you come here and you get something from the dirt oven you want to eat it one time because it's warm and tasty, it crumbles in your mouth. So yeah, the dirt oven is it's pretty well, it's pretty well done and beautiful. You can literally come here with all your gold, you could come here with your money sticking out your pocket and no one would care because they understand why you're here. You understand the village itself has maintained its history and its, its culture and it's a culture that you will get nowhere else on the island. Literally. Um, I'm not from Castara itself. I'm from Signal Hill, which is in Scarborough. And I would be here most of the time. I would literally, once I have the free time, this is where I would be. As I said before, it's too relaxing. It's too nice. It's it really and truly, if you haven't been here, you should be here. So my name is Keisha Wilson Farrier. I am the head chef at Caribbean Kitchen at Casa Retreat. Today I prepared some vegetable rice, potato salad, some fresh lentil peas with ginger, fresh cooper with pineapple and mango salsa. I get my inspiration from God. I cook my food with love, with fresh seasoning, and I hope you guys enjoy it. My name is Zenon Thomas, I'm the executive chef here. This is a somewhat of a fine dining experience. Local cuisines, it's fused with international concepts and ideas. So on these plates here, at the base is a beetroot chutney. To the side, we have mango, curry mango. In the center, this is a put aloo biscuit or potato biscuit. Inside is your traditional paratha or bus up shot. On top of that now, we have a saffron twill, and then in a short while, we're gonna put the curry, chicken, and shrimp mousse on top of that. And then finally, there's a tamarind glaze that we're just gonna finish it off with. <laughs> a little bit of bacchanal there, as I say. I'm Oliana Poon, I'm the Managing Director of Levy Global. And today, May the 5th, we are celebrating our fourth Levy. As you know, Leve means to lift up, to elevate. And the whole aim of Leve is to lift up and elevate ourselves, the talent, the culture that Trinidad, Tobago and the Caribbean has to offer. And we're really, truly pleased this year to, to celebrate fine art, fashion, cuisine, and to really elevate our sound, our, I mean, total and completely. We have today um, artists from Curaçao. We have artists from Dominica. In fact, Dominica is our feature destination this year because our theme for Leve this year is fashioning our future. It's about creating a future that we want, a future that we desire. And it's very important to know that we have, we have it all in the Caribbean. It's a fantastic destination. It's a belief and an understanding that people are our future and we are just so fantastic. If we release that 
that creativity in our people and in our countries, I think we could do a better job. And I think having been a practitioner for more than 30 years in this industry, I think the time has come when you can no longer talk until the cows come home. And our motto this time is JDI, just do it. Let us make it happen. We would love other companies, other people to, to do similar initiatives. And I think by these initiatives, we can actually create the world we want and to create the future we want. One step at a time, one person at a time, one talent at a time, one country at a time. Beyond Trinidad and Tobago, we've been helping destinations the world over for the last 20 years, doing tourism differently, making a difference, creating a change to, to livelihoods of people all over the world, from Australia to Zambia. I mean, we've been everywhere doing these kinds of work. And most recently, of course, our partner country, Dominica that has really pledged to be the most climate resilient country in the whole world. And we believe that it's not just the product you create, but it's the process, the process of involving people. Because if people are elevated, if people believe in themselves, we can make a whole difference to the world. We have arrived. We have achieved. And it's really where we need to, to be taking it for the future. And we really wish that other people copy and follow. That's what it's about. And thank you so much.